This is a great song. Santana with Everlast, some great little uh, main riff in there, some really normal chords. Check it out, you know it. C. G coming. F to E. A repeat. Of really a few really normal chords there. I said F, don't let that spooky. It's the easy F. Some of you have written me about that. Uh, some of you are calling it the cheating F. It's F major seventh. It's easy. You don't have to bar. So let's get to that when we get to it. But hey, welcome back. Shane here from Guitar Work. Glad to have you back. Thank you for subscribing and all that happy YouTube stuff. The thumbs up have meant the world here. Um, I love this song. Uh, Put Your Lights On, Santana featuring Everlast. And uh, it's just full of really cool strumming patterns, which I've written out for you. And I don't want to forget to mention, head to patreon.com slash guitar work. I've got three sheets for you on this one. Uh, two song sheets and one with a ton of detail on including the strumming pattern, which is a really cool strumming pattern for sure. And um, from there, now as to format, like we have been doing, I'll put the play along towards the end. We'll do a slow play along at first and then do a full speed play along. But I also like the, getting a lot of good feedback about the lead bits at the very end of the video. So those of you that want to stick around, uh, we'll do a little bit of lead and I'll here, I'll put it in a looper here. I'll just loop that part I did. This is the amazing Arrows Looper connected to the Beat Buddy from Singular Sound, proudly affiliated. I'll just loop that very quickly. I'll loop that first part. One, two, three, here it comes now, I know. One. Fine, no hands. So when it comes around again, I'll play the opening lead bit. So we'll talk about this toward the very, very end. Once we have the song down, let's nail this part down. He's on electric, I'm on acoustic. That's okay. One, two, three, four. You know it. So anyway. Ton of fun and you see how easy that was to loop. Um, you don't need a looper and a drum machine to be here doing this song with us, but if you have them, they're a lot of fun. Again, that's singular sound. That's the Beat Buddy and the Eros Looper. This is the gold edition with the silent buttons. I love it, love it, absolutely love it. And I'll clear that out. It's as easy as this, boink. And then, um, so let's get right at it. Now, the Patreon, I should explain, doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. There are a ton of songs, dozens of songs up there. I forget how many. I'm gonna actually go in there and count it one of these days. Um, but what we can basically do is uh, play along together a ton of different songs. So I highly recommend jump in on Patreon and uh, people are telling me it's really working for them. So that is great. Um, now looking at, looking at A minor, this guy here. Before we get to the strumming pattern, which you're gonna find on your detail sheet, I got it here in my trusty iPad. I'm on an A minor, no problem there. There's gonna be a C. Only one finger should move from A minor to C. It's your ring finger. When we get there, there's a G. I'm gonna go to this G because the acoustic guitar on the song is going to that G. And now F major seven is like an F, but you stand up your first finger. You don't have to bar that guy, just stand him up. Got a jazzy, nice sound for sure. And that's gonna to go to an E. Yeah, so F, there's two X's in that F major seven. Now, if you're up to it, but don't throw your back out trying this, I'm gonna put my thumb over. Instead of having two X's, these two strings being unavailable, the lowest two strings, um, I'm gonna put my big juicy thumb over and play the first fret of that low E string. Now I got all six strings available. It really fattens things up, but um, you may not have the length in your thumb to get that. Uh, don't hurt yourself for real. Notice I have to, even with the length of my digits here, I've got to get my elbow up and a tongue out. I said, there you go. Um, so don't hurt yourself, but know that's a good thing to work toward. The thumb can act like a fifth finger almost, you know? Um, so from those basic chords, we build our riff. So you're gonna see down in the middle of your details page, after all those chord diagrams, you're gonna see it says main riff, A minor. The numbers you're seeing written on the strings, that's telling you what to do in terms of melody. So I'm gonna do this, it's saying down, there's a little D written there, down. The one is saying that there's a one on the B string. Now, coincidentally, it's your first finger, and it's also the, but it really means the first fret. So the one is there, so just follow me here. I'm gonna go one, it's down. Now, down, up, down, nothing moved, because it's all ones. Here's a zero, I'm gonna take this guy off. Zero means open, no finger. That's zero and back on with the first finger. That's the first two thirds of the bar. So here's a top again, A minor. Off, on. And pay, 
attention to your down ups right away. Um, you know, there's a, there's I know there's a lot of disagreement as to how to how to communicate strumming patterns. Some people say, oh, you just got to be able to feel it. Well, that's true at some point, but there might be a few where you have to do it like this. I call it step time, where you're literally staring at a sheet going down, up, down, and it's not going to feel musical until either you memorize it or you know it well enough, or you're just kind of looking at it as a security blanket, right? Um, but it can feel very stiff and, and unmusical until you eat, internalize it. So know that that's really, really normal. Don't feel like you're uncoordinated or you have a bad sense of time. I see that a lot because this is, I would say this is a fairly, um, you know, intermediate advanced strumming pattern. So it's not, it's not just down up. So we've got some movement here with the fingers. Here is the first bar A minor. Now these last four strums, down, up, down, up, uh, those, that's just filler. So your right hand is going to have to make the distinction between what's melodically important. So I want to hear that movement when the first finger comes off. So I'll play that a little louder. Now this is filler. In other words, it's not melodically significant. So don't just let this guy, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, maybe you just need to get the, the, the actual strums down before you think of this, but remember your right hand is your arranger and your conductor, so to speak. So we don't on everything. Full out, there's no there's no music in that, right? So try try to have, when, you, when you've memorized it, try to uh, just be a little gentler on there. So here's A minor again. Okay, now C, one finger's gonna move. I'm gonna strum it once. You're seeing a one there, indicating your first finger there on your first fret. Now the three, I'm gonna take my pinky, and I'm gonna put them on the third fret of the B string. Third fret, it's a C chord. Pinky's gonna go third fret of the B string. Technically, that's a C add nine, but we don't need to name it. Uh, pinky's on, first finger stays on. He's not bugging anybody, and we're gonna have to go back to him anyway. So I'm gonna go pinky on, three, 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 three. Now off comes the pinky, that's your one. Here's a zero. And then up, down, up. Now that's a lot. Here's your C again. Top of the C bar, second bar. C, pinky on. Down, up, down, up. Pinky off, up. First finger off. And then fills up, down, up. So in time, three and a four. C. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Three and a four and a... Now, I'm a strong believer you've got two bars there. You may want to stop tape and go right back to the beginning um, and just add a bar as you're, as you're comfortable. Sometimes going through the entire thing in one sitting is just too much to swallow. So here's the top again, A minor, three, four. Off, on, fills, C. Pinky on, down, up, down, up, off, off. And here's your G, big G, down, now the three is on the high string. You already have him for free, right? Your pinky is playing that guy. He's playing the third fret of that high string. Here's G again. And then down, up, down, up. Now pinky comes off. That's your zero, which sounds odd until it finishes. And then I got a little down, up, down, up. Here's your G bar again. Three, four. And down, up, down, up. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Again, we added a bar. Go back to the top. See if you remember the A minor and C. Here it comes slowly. A minor three, four, going. Down, up, down. Here's your C coming. Pinky. G. Off, down, up, down, up. F major seven is this guy. You don't bother with the thumb if you can't do it. There's no numbers because all you're doing is strumming. F major seven, down, up, down, up. Here's your E, up, down. And then just filling it up. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Here's that F major seven again. Down, up, down, up. Here's an E, up, down. Good, so I'd highly recommend stopping tape right there just to get to, on your own time, try to get through that. Now you can do the play along even before you've nailed that by just playing the basic chords. We'll talk about that in just a sec, but let me play it a couple of times slowly all the way through for you and maybe you can play along. Or if not, just stop tape and work on what you need to work on. Here's an A minor, three and a four going. C. F 
major seven to an E. Top A minor. C pinky. G pinky off. F major seven to E. Last time. A minor. C pinky. G pinky off. F major seven to E. Good. So that's the main riff or the the hook of the song, the, the motif, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I should tell you, uh, the song, it's, a, it's an odd form, to tell you the truth. It's cool, but it's a different kind of a form. I put in bold and, and italics what I consider to be the chorus. So the song starts with two choruses, is how I see it anyway. And then when they're not bold and italic, I'm calling those verses. So we start out that way. In the intro, there's a beautiful lead guitar over top. When the singer comes in, we still play the same chords, but we don't do all the fancy stuff. We just play the same strumming pattern like... singers in you don't move just stay on a regular C regular G and uh, take all the melody out of it so that's kind of a relief um, why would you do that why did they do that uh, possibly because it sounded a bit busy when the singer is in there trying to sing on top of that it kind of uh, draws your attention away from the singer perhaps or uh, it all another thought may be that it sounds so welcome when it returns later in the song which it does it'll return later in the song you go oh yeah it's pretty it's all about pacing sometimes you know arranging for songs like that um, so hey, uh, I've said that. Now the only other part to look out for here, the of real of consequence, uh, it would be sorry. Two parts would be the verse section, which is easy as pie. That's just A minor. There's a monster E7 under my bed. Just do the same strumming pattern you would do for uh, the A minor on both of those chords. But he does do this part during that verse section where the lyrics are because there's a monster living under my bed. Uh, a minor. He does that little noodle on the A minor and then on the E7, which is just an E minus the ring finger, E minus the ring finger. Nothing moves. And just do the same pattern with your right hand that you did on the A minor in your set. Um, so there's that, watch out for that. And then, uh, now, the instrumental section. Here we go, I call this, I hate to say it, but I call this the noisy part. It goes bananas, the song goes bananas, and they're all power chords. Power chords, um, you're gonna see on your sheet, have been, uh, it's kind of internet speak, but it's, it's, it's taken root, so I guess we can't, I can't fight it. C5 is a power chord shape. Now, no, watch out for the Roman numerals you're seeing on your sheet. There's a Roman numeral three beside that chord diagram. That's telling you that the chord diagram begins on the third fret. So when you see this guy, which appears to be on the first fret, he's actually on the third fret. That's what that Roman numeral means. That's important. There's an X on the low E, which means you don't hit him. And here, so here's my shape. Boom. I'm using three fingers. There is a power chord. You can just use two like that. I just like to have my pinky underneath. It gives me a little more room room here and it fattens things up maybe that's a power chord shape if you find that that is a big stretch for you if it is a big stretch you probably your thumb is up like that which really negates your stretch in the pinky you got to really watch out for that so the pinky uh, doesn't work as well if he is if your thumb is up like that so i'm bringing that down like that now you can only hit the strings that you have fingers on okay you only, with your right hand so that's the a d g and what they do when they get there is two shots they're punches like that and then I'll go like this, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. I'm going to release the pressure on the chord to get to, get to mute the strings, just so there's something in there. Uh, because they have a whole band, right? We're just one person with a guitar, so walk the chicken, marche la poule, everything in both official languages here. So walk the chicken, and then marche la poule, like that. Now, muting is a really important skill, so be able to get that. You might get some strings that are ringing through. The whole thing, my first finger is touching like that, coaxing, like stopping notes wherever it has to. It's like the damper pedal on a piano. Like that. You just have to practice finding the spot in your hand where everything works. So that's what we do on a C5. Now, if you drag that up one fret, that's your C sharp five. And the electric guitar is going wild at this point in the song. Really hard to know what's going on, but C sharp is only one fret higher. It's the same shape. It's a beautiful thing about power chords. That's your C sharp. Now G is on the third fret, but on the lowest set of strings. See that guy, that lowest set. You got your third fret low E, fifth fret A, and fifth fret D. That's a G power chord. G power chord. And walk the chicken. And uh, so far we've got C5. Walk the chicken C sharp. 
Walk the chicken, G. Walk the chicken. And I'm taking time in between those. Sorry, I don't want to mess you up rhythmically. Here's an F. And here, you're going to see this F, E. So it's kind of similar to the, the opening bit. Let me play an entire instrumental section for you. This is the noisy part. Three and a four, C. Walk the chicken, C sharp. Walk the chicken, G. Walk the chicken, F to E. C. Walk the chicken, C sharp. Walk the G. Walk the chicken. Good. You do that four times, and after the fourth time, you repeat the F to E thing. And then comes in with the riff. So when we're doing it with the riff, I'll show it out riff in or riff out, okay? Because it comes in and out to make sure we're all together on that. Um, hey, so that's it. Let's do, now you probably need to stop tape there. I know we're tearing through this. Stop tape there. Let's do a slow play along there now. Um, I'll just do the first, uh, like up, up into, up to and including the, the instrumental bit, which is the end of the first page. Okay, so we'll do that much in there. It comes in at 72 beats per minute. And those of you with Beat Buddies um, are asking me uh, what pattern I'm using. Um, and this is the blues one pattern. It's kind of my default. Um, it's it's a great pattern. There's nothing inherently bluesy about it. It's a rocky, bluesy, four on a floor, kind of good solid rock beat. So blues one pattern that comes on any beat buddy, beat buddy mini, whatever. Uh, you're good to go. 72 beats a minute. So for the slow version, I'll bring it down to 62. Because if we go any slower than that, things get a little bit soupy. I usually take 20 points. We'll take 10 off here today. Now it's all about levels, right? So this is the, um, the, play, the slow play along. You do what you can. And if you miss something, if you don't even do the noodles, just play the regular chords without the noodles. And you build on that and eventually you get the, the noodles of these things. All those little movements that bring the song to life. But there is a step before that, perhaps if you're new, if these chords are new to you, just playing the chords would be a, a real triumph. So get in there and try that. I'm gonna do the intro just as it says, times two, and then we are in. I'll talk out the lyrics as best I can. And we'll bring the fabulous beat buddy in. Three, four, going one. Two, give you a four count. We're in the intro. One, two, here's your main riff. Three, four, going. There's a C. G. F T. A minor. Repeating the intro. C. G. F to E. First chorus, A minor, no riff, A minor, no riff. Same strong pattern, C. All you sinners, G. Put your lights on, F to E. A minor, third line, E now, no riff, C. All you lovers, G. Lights on, F to E, A minor, A now, C, the second chorus here, on you killers, G, put your lights on, F to E, A minor, A now, C, on you children, F major 7 to E. Good. Now, verse 1, A minor, with the riff. To an E7, living under my bed. No riff on E7, A minor, with a riff. Whispering in my ear. A minor, an angel. E7, a hand on my head. A minor. Seven, nothing to fear. Second verse coming, A minor. Darkness. E7, deep in my soul. A minor. Purpose to serve. A minor. Let your light shine. E7, into my hole. 
A minor. E7, lose my nerve. Here comes the instrumental. C5, 3, 4. The chicken, C sharp. G, F to E. C, rock the C sharp. G, rock the F to E. C, C sharp. G here. Walk the chicken F to E. C, walk C sharp. Last time. F to E. Repeat the F to E. Repeat the F to E. Two, three, A minor. We'd be in the main riff again on the second page. Okay. I hope you did okay with that. Um, ton of fun to play, that's for sure. I'll just bring the speed back up to 72 beats a minute, which is as easy as dialing in uh, that into the Beat Buddy. And uh, I can't stop talking about the Beat Buddy because it's fantastic. I'm using by Singular Sound, a Beat Buddy description's, uh, sorry, the um, link is in the description below. It's so fun, it's way more fun than a metronome. I hope you'll grab one. Um, and I connect that to their Singular Sound Eros Looper. This is the gold edition, I'm so lucky to have it. Silent buttons, because I'm always around microphones and cameras doing this. And they've really done a classy job on this thing. It's fantastic. The two work together so seamlessly, highly recommend. Looping is an essential skill now. It's like having a practice partner. It's just, you just gotta be able to do it. it makes things, it brings things to life, it really does. So that's Singular Sound. We use the promo code GAW10, and it'll get you 10% off and help us support the channel. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let's do the full speed play along. Head to patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab your sheets and a whole lot of other songs in there as well. And uh, join us, <coughs> pardon me, join us for sure. We're back up to full speed, 72 beats a minute. And uh, just hang in there. Remember, play alongs, recovery skills. So if you miss something, wait for the next line, wait for the next chord, whatever you gotta do that's going to happen to you when you're jamming with somebody. So you may as well get used to it in the comfort of your own home and doing it on video. So here we go, everything's recording that should be recording and here comes the main riff. I'll count this in. There's your beat buddy, one, two, three, main riff, intro. C. G. F to E. A minor. A minor, first verse, A now. C, straight chords, all you sinners. G, put your lights on, F to E, put your lights on. A minor, A now, no F, C, just regular chords here. All you lovers, G, put your lights on, F to E. Second chorus now, A minor, A now. No riff, C. All you killers, G. Put your lights on, F to E. A minor, A now. C. All you children, G. Put your lights on, F to E. First chorus now. I got verse, I mean A minor, sorry, A minor. With the riff, E7, under my bed. A minor, with the riff, whispering in my ear, A minor, angel, E7, hand on my head, A minor, nothing to fear, second chorus coming, there's a darkness, A minor, there's a darkness, E7, deep in my soul, A minor, Purpose, E7, sir. A minor, nice shine. E7, into my hole. A minor, don't let me lose my nerve. E7, now right to the C5, to go instrumental, bow. C sharp, noisy part, G, F to E. Three more, C, the chicken, C sharp, G. The chicken F to E C. Walk the chicken C sharp G F to E. One more C sharp G F to E. Repeat the F to E. Scrolling and three 
Main riff. Page two. C. Pinky. That's your main riff. F to E. He's kind of groaning here. A minor. C. G. F to E. Now the next chorus, A now, no riff. A minor, no riff. Just regular strum, A now. C. All of you sinners, G. Put your lights on, F to E. Next line, A now. A now. No riff, C. All you children, G. Leave your lights on, F to E. Now, verse A minor, monster, with riff, E7. Under my bed, A minor. Whispering in my ear, A minor. There's a angel, E7. With a hand on my head, A minor. Nothing to fear. Now, main riff, main riff. La la la. La da da da. Half major 70. Da da da. Main riff again. Bottom of the page. Last one. A minor. Ended on an A minor. There we go. That's it. The end of clean on an A minor. Hope you got through that okay. Um, and if you didn't, I hope that you waited here and there, caught up, played the regular course, whatever you had to do to get, to go top to bottom. Um, it can be tricky too. If you're staring at a sheet and you have to look at your fingers and then you look at your sheet again, you don't know where you are. So that happens. There's lots of things to contend with. Pretty easy song to memorize. You may want to set your goal to memorize that because the, you get more of a feeling of, uh, I don't know, it's more musical if you don't have to stare at the sheet. It's a bit more musical, you're, you're freer. I tend, to, I tend to take more chances with my right hand when I'm not staring at a sheet. The sheets kind of confine me a little bit once I, once I know the song, though, of course. Okay, cool. Now, for those of you who want to stick around, let's learn this little lead part here. It is on the very bottom of your detail sheet. Grab those sheets, patreon.com slash guitar at work. And again, that was a fabulous Eros Looper. Um, the screen, I'll, I'm going to invoke it here now. All I have to do, there's your... Uh, Eros Gold Edition Looper from Singer Sound. Absolutely love it. Big graphic screen. You can see exactly where the um, where the loop stops and starts. It makes it so much easier. And because it's connected to the Beat Buddy, which is the cable, plug it on in, and they speak to each other. When I press Go on the Beat Buddy, it'll give me a four count before it starts recording on, on the Looper. So they talk to each other. It's beautiful that way. It's so seamless. So I'm going to record as I did in the very beginning the main riff just one time around and I'll, let me play the lead part one more time then we'll stop the looper and get you playing it as well so here's uh, here's my loop one two three four taping look my no hands a big volume knob there you can move with your foot I'll use my hand but you can boom big volume knob and that's handy here's the lead for one two three four love it you know Santana it, whoop, it goes without saying um, boom <laughs> Master, master lead guitar player. His patience and his phrasing is fabulous. He's not, doesn't seem to be in a rush and it really shows. Clapton is, to me, the sim similar. Um, so what do we got here? You're seeing three, or excuse me, 13 with your middle finger. I'll put the fingers underneath that are circled. Those are left hand fingering suggestions uh, because it is coming, emanating from a scale. You tend to use scale pattern fingerings and at least it's like learning to type. You don't want to change your letters around every time you're trying to type, right? So your fingers get used to one set. Um, here's the 13 to 12. You can see a pull off. A little P over top and that slur indicator is telling me to play the 13 on the B string here and pull off to the 12. So if you're not hearing yours as loud as you want, there's a couple of techniques here. You don't want to do this, 13, and then slam that guy down on 12. He needs to be there prior to your pulling off so he catches you. He, he catches a note. There you go. Slur. 
legato, um, and you pull down toward the floor. If you come, if you come straight off, you're going to find you don't get as much volume as you may want. So you kind of snap it down toward the floor, and that resolves on 14 on the G string. So you got this again. That's your first bar. Those are not actual bars. Those are just sort of complete thoughts to break it up visually. Uh, now it's going to go from there. 14 on the D, 12, 14 again, and then 12 on the G. So the second bar is this. I should remind you, I like to rest my right hand here on the pins when I'm playing lead stuff. I miss less strings that way. If I was just out in space, I'd be missing strings all the time. I see people do it. It's amazing to me they can do it. But I got the heel of my hand, I'll call it resting on those pins. For me, that makes the pick stroke emanate from the wrist. So I tend to be a bit more accurate that way. Here's the first two bars. We'll pause and then... If you have any length of time on a note, see that vibrato, tremolo, vibrato, it brings a note to life. We're trying to almost imitate a human voice here. If you're, you'd never hear a singer just sit on a note if they're holding it for any length of time. It just sounds like a sine wave or something. Uh, bar number three is this guy. 12, 14, 12. We'll get the phrasing in a sec, but 12, bar number three, 12, 14, and I'll go to the end here. Last bar is this. 12, 14, same string, 10, go down to 10, and then 9. I don't actually hear him playing the 9, but uh, I like it when we're playing it together be uh, without benefit of the recording because it tidies it up. He, I think he laid out there, which is cool, but he's got a whole band with him, right? Four bars in a row. Three, four, and then third bar. Fourth bar. If you're having trouble with access, you should be able to access that. It's kind of the, the end of the road for you. If you don't have a cutaway, you don't need one here, but you may be having to leave your thumb behind to get those big high notes. If you're going to play a bit of lead guitar and you don't have a cutaway, get used to that. There's, there's a way you can do it. One more time, I'll play with the loop. Three, four, and a... Super slow. Bar two. Bar three. Bar four. Okay, let's put the looper on and I'll go around two or three times. Okay, so here it comes. One, two, three, four. Right on the money. Bar two. Three. Four. One. R2. Last time. There we go. Now I know some of you are going to email me and ask me about those little slides I started putting in them but the second time through. Um, I didn't notate them, but you can, you know, I'll go the first first note in the second bar, I'll slide up to it from one fret below. That little gliss, it humanizes things, and uh, Santana's master at that. I think he's not using a pick, by the way, but I am using a pick. Um, he's just got this particular sound. Um, the attacks are beautiful. They're not just, you know, they're not uniform. He kind of sneaks up on you. I absolutely love it. Um, but those little slides and, 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 and what hammers and stuff. I don't, I didn't notate all of them simply because people get so caught up in the ornaments that they never just learn the basic idea. I promise you, you get that idea down, get the notes down. The ornaments come from that. Don't try to build them in when you're, when you're memorizing the basic notes, basic features of the idea. No, no, no. Add the ornaments. It's exactly what they are as ornaments. They come later. Okay. They come later and uh, you'll have control over the ornaments rather than bashing people over the head with them. Um, so hey, that is our song, and I hope you enjoyed that. Always fun. I really appreciate you coming back. The thumbs up have meant the world here. I'll say again, I appreciate it, and I want to give a big shout out to Singular Sound for the Beat Buddy and the Eros Looper. This is the Gold Edition. is so beautiful, so elegant, and the two of them together are gorgeous. The links are in the description below. The promo, co promo code is GAW10. They're testing the fire alarms. It's the first Friday of every month. So I'll sign off there, guys. Okay, my dog's gonna howl in a second. One, two, buy a beat buddy. I know. Okay.
I know what. I know, honey. Okay, I know, honey. Oh, I know. <laughs> okay, sweetie, I'm coming. I'm coming. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I know, honey. I know. I know. Oh, I know. I'm coming, buddy. I'm coming. Okay, buddy. Okay, come here. Come here, buddy.